hi all uh, welcome to part 9 on er model so far we almost covered uh, all the basic concept of er diagram like uh, what is entity what are all its attribute different types of attribute their notations then relationship cardinality and participation ratio constraints then last video lecture we discussed that weak entity now it's time for us to come uh, draw the er diagram directly so before uh, moving on to the er diagram let me uh, summarize the symbols we studied so far okay um, hope you remember the symbol and the meaning i am telling uh, everything um, throughout all these previous eight videos we covered right so what is an entity you know right now and uh, this is how we are representing an entity just with a rectangular box and in said that we can write the name of the entity okay so something like that and uh, weak entity hope you remember uh, it is not having a key attribute so dependent uh, is an example right dependent i'm just keeping uh, here it is about the notation only anyway i'm writing also uh, so we will relate it with a strong entity through an identifying relation that also hope you remember and relationship uh, like employee works for like that and this is the symbol the diamond mm, shape and uh, again with the double line we use for the identifying relationship like uh, dependent depends depends on something like that okay now attributes hope you remember like uh, uh, the name of an employee um, address and uh, other things we are using this oval shape and we uh, relate it with the uh, particular entity using a straight line and this is a key attribute you hope you remember that social security number something you can take as an example and multi-valued attribute to say uh, locations of a department or a simple example phone number you can take uh, one person is supposed to have more than one phone number in that way okay now this is a composite attribute that address attribute hope you remember address uh, like uh, the street uh, city state okay country city like that you can uh, decompose it further this uh, again street number like that you can if you want you can decompose it further also so some kind of hierarchy you can think of okay composite attribute some derived attribute uh, hope you remember that the age we are not going to store them in the database like a date of birth you will store and using date of birth and the current date you can derive this age information so that dotted oval shape is what we are using for derived attribute some examples only i am writing inside the um, symbols i think it is fine for you um, but actually uh, symbol alone is there okay now it's time to discuss this participation hope you remember the participation total participation total participation we are denoting by this uh, double line right um, in our example that we can it is something we saw as a total participation and also um, you can think of this example that is employee works for department and that time we saw that every employee uh, must work in some department if that is the case okay if that is the case then it, there will be a total participation something like that otherwise if uh, that is not the case there will be a partial participation fine cardinality ratio uh, this also same example you can take like uh, one department can have uh, n number of employees so if you are looking at it's not like that um, I mean, if I am looking at a particular employee, he can participate in a um, on work in a own department. But if I am looking at the department, uh, so here again that works for something. But the direction I am just changing uh, because one department can have a n number of employee. One employee can work on a single department. So that's the meaning. This uh, notation meaning that can vary is very slightly, but in our I mean, I'm just following the convention used in Navadi textbook again, okay. And uh, finally, these two things you can combine using something called as a structural constraint, where instead of this double line and this uh, numbering, these this double line, you know, and or single line, that is the participation constraint. The participation constraint is giving you the minimum cardinality, okay. Minimum how many relationship instance a particular uh, entity instance can participate, right? Uh, and and the cardinality ratio is going to give you the maximum cardinality maximum constraint okay 
and this minimum and maximum you can put in parenthesis or some ordered pair and you can write like this so that is what is your structural constraint and and that time if it is total you know uh, this total uh, corresponds to the same example uh, so if uh, i am having uh, department and employee you know total corresponds to one and partial corresponds to zero so minimum zero people maximum one person right and ma uh, sorry uh, pa the, i mean minimum zero uh, in case of partial participation minimum one in case of total participation so accordingly minimum will vary and maximum is up to the department like uh, one or n and sometimes you can give a different number also if you are very clear like minimum this much like five people uh, like that or maximum some uh, hundred people if that is the case that number also you can mention so this is something called as a structural uh, constraint so now we have the final diagram this is something i shown you at the very beginning also now you can analyze this diagram in detail and also from the given set of uh, specification that you collected from the mini world you are supposed to draw something like this so that is the whole thing right so how we are going to draw this uh, that one by one uh, you have to develop the skill and in that is the way i organize the lectures like initially we discuss what is entity what are attributes then we draw this diagram without this relationship hope you remember like entity and so in exam also you can try that way like uh, you just uh, for focus on the entities and their attribute and draw them independently then you find out different relationship possible so based on the specification given and something you can assume in your own way if needed like uh, that a weak entity identifying relationship those things and uh, you can uh, uh, mark them and then after you have to think about the cardinality the minimum cardinality and maximum cardinality so here uh, the uh, cardinality ratio and participation constraint they are represented differently and uh, one by one you take each relationship and try to understand why it is n or why it is one okay what could be the reason so that you think about in the background so most of them are from the mini world specification only and the same thing you can represent using structural constraint also maybe uh, i will uh, uh, give, take that example also when it comes to structural constraint this uh, where to write this ma n and one so there is a slight difference but anyway at this point don't think about uh, that one that i will uh, separately tell you so here just focus on uh, the way uh, like how i explained that uh, n and one okay so that that way you can represent so let me uh, start with the each one i uh, hope you remember this employee table with the key attribute ssn and uh, we have the composite attribute name right with the first name middle name last name uh, as the um, sub parts uh, say birth date is there address is there salary is there um, gender is there okay that about it now dep dep department is another one where this name that is our mini world constraint two departments are not supposed to have the same name that is the reason this name is becoming a key attribute okay but here uh, two people may have the same name that is why here it is not the key okay so that you have to be clear that is why here ssn is uh, separately coming as a key and the um, number in the sense department is supposed to get some unique number like that ssn so that is also fine to be key and locations is something like a multi valued in the sense that same department can be in multiple locations maybe like its branches but at the same time hope you remember if you are looking at the project uh, you can see that the location is single valued in the sense a project is supposed to run on a single location only so these are all our mini world constraints again i am repeating similarly name of the project and number both are found to be unique so they are independently act, uh, acting as a key attribute okay fine now dependent table uh, you can see that there is no key attribute but there is something called as partial key that is represented by this dotted line uh, the name okay Mm, there is something uh, so they hope you remember this particular uh, derived attribute number of employees okay so just like uh, age of the employee um, which you can derive so if you want you can denote so here there is no age right so if you want you can add age also how will you add that age of an employee you can use a dotted oval and you can write like that that means i'm going not going to store this age but i need it as an um, attribute uh, in my entity and where its value i'll be deriving deriving from the birth date and the current date okay fine so here similarly number of employees in a department again you don't have to store it in a separate field simply you can count it right so how many employee instances this department is related uh, through this works for relationship yeah that about it 
similarly now we can uh, think about the different relationship one thing is like works for employee is working on a department so works for a department like that and employee can manage the department also that is a different kind of relationship all employees are not going to be the managers okay so managers is another another relationship okay so works for is one relationship managers is another relationship and here you can see an attribute for the relationship the manager's relationship is having this attribute that is start date from which date onwards he started uh, managing this particular um, organization something like that if you want you can keep okay similarly works on employee is working on a project right on one or more project one project can have a n number of employees this also you, uh, that we will discuss next uh, works on and that time you can uh, keep this hours uh, as a attribute for the relationship okay so here i was uh, talking about the start date as an attribute for this manager's relationship here hours how many hours per week this particular employee is working on a particular project like that you can maintain an attribute for the relationship now if you want you can move this hours into project or employee uh, employee entity um, but not in a straightforward way or you can maintain a separate table for that uh, i mean separate entity for that anyway we will see that uh, mapping kind of thing in when we discuss that relational models that is the main thing we are discussing there as of now uh, this is something you are communicating with the user so this is enough like works for relationship is having an attribute hours for the time being okay now depends uh, of is another one we added just for this uh, week entity and we observed that um, uh, it is a identifying relationship right and supervision also hope you remember like uh, we defined it as a recursive relation where any an employee can supervise some other employee so it is related to the employee table itself okay and that time um, so role is important now you can see that the uh, one side the employee is taking the role as a supervisor and at the other side the same employee uh, instances are taking it may be a different employee but from the employee table they are coming supervisory role or, or the um, su superior and subordinate like that supervisor and supervisory role okay so role also i mentioned in other cases we are not mentioning role because uh, when it comes to um, relationship relating to distinct entity that entity name itself is enough but when it comes to the relationship that is relating uh, an entity to itself that is a self referencing or the recursive relationship and that time it, it should be better if you may mention the role like at this side the same employee table acting as a supervisor and here the same employee table acting as the supervisor that is way uh, that is the way i am taking the instances okay hope you get the idea and now finally so this is a way you have to draw this diagram first this entities you have to draw uh, their attribute the correct notation you have to give then the relationship after that you have to think of the cardinality ratio okay so first you can think about the cardinality ratio that is a maximum how many can participate then you can think about the participation constraint okay okay we, uh, let's see both now so if you are uh, hmm, looking at the uh, employee table okay uh, you can see like uh, uh, what I can tell you see uh, if I am looking at a uh, particular department it can contain n number of employees so is this the way we discuss so far but anyway uh, in the diagram finally they are drawing like that so we can understand like that so on department so um, at this side if i am looking at maybe if i explained it in a different way so sorry for that this is a final notation you understand like that so what what does it mean n employees can work on a single department so the department when it is coming it is coming as a single instance okay and employee some n employees are getting related to a particular department okay so that is the meaning so if i am taking a particular instance from here n people are getting mapped to this okay so that uh, that is this n and one but uh, if i am looking at this manager's relationship one employee is getting um, related to one department in the sense every department only one uh, employee as a manager and one uh, from the employee point of view he can manage only a single department okay here a department can hold n number of employees so that that is something we are writing here an employee can be can work on a single department okay so uh, typically you know this is something we are writing very near to the diamond okay so from here and here like that so this is the way we it is to be denoted and project you know uh, works on 
it was m m to n like uh, uh, one employee can work on n number of project and uh, one project can hold m number of employee okay so it is something like m m to n okay i am talking about this Now, if you are looking at a depends uh, relationship, that also hope you remember. One person can depend on a single um, employee, but one employee can have a n number of dependent. This where to write this n and one? I think I may explain differently. But anyway, this is a final diagram. This is a way you have to write. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that also something. If you are changing the convention, I I, I don't think so. It's a big thing. Uh, but throughout the diagram the same convention you have to follow but anyway as this is a way it is drawn in the textbook it is better to follow this okay anyways okay fine uh, finally the supervision also as a supervisor he can supervise n number of supervisee okay but uh, from the supervisee point of view he belongs to a single supervisor right so just write in the opposite way like that you can remember at this point is it clear uh, now partial uh, the minimum cardinality also minimum cardinality uh, total and partial double line is total i mean everybody should participate in that relationship and single line is total uh, here if you are looking at employee every employee should work on a uh, particular uh, some department that is a meaning and department also we are making total in the sense it may be another constraint from our mini world saying that a department is not um, supposed to work without any employee that is meaningless you can say like a department under construction and all but i am not allowing so i am using the term department only when uh, some employees are mapped to this at least one employee should be mapped to the, that department otherwise i can't call it as a department so that is why this side also it is getting total every every department should relate to some employee here and when you are looking at the managers relationship this is a very good example you can see that the department must have a manager so that is why here it is total okay department must have a uh, manager so here it is found to be total where if you are looking at employee all employee are not supposed to be uh, manager of some department that is why here it is partial uh, right is it clear similarly um, the project uh, employee if uh, he is uh, an employee he should work on at least one project right otherwise it is meaningless so that is why here it is total and here also uh, project me is meaningless without assigning any employee associating employees with it so that also total fine Similarly, here you, you already know dependent this weekend it is always having that association total with the uh, that one and the meaning also you know supervisor um, partial both side because all employees are not going to supervise someone else and uh, I mean those who are at the very superior level uh, they may not be supervised by someone else so they are because they are at the top of the hierarchy similarly those who are at the bottom level of the hierarchy there may not be some subordinate under him so both side it is partial only okay fine. Mm, hope the diagram is clear similarly uh, there, here one more thing is there i forgot to tell you that's uh, controls department is controlling some project right so you can see if you are looking at a particular project it is under the control of a single department okay but if you are looking at a uh, one department it can control n number of projects so that is a meaning so it should be understand in this way uh, okay uh, fine so I completely explained this. Now you can think of a, uh, think of a different set of specification of some other mini world, and you can start thinking uh, of this. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and uh, maybe one more uh, video I will be making uh, with some more uh, different examples, and we will summarize things. Okay.